Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and for my American audience, I hope you guys had a happy Thanksgiving. And everybody else, I hope you also had some delicious food to eat. All right, so let's get to it. So we're going to be making this fire. It's pretty simple. It's built with like one path and one other tiny little animated shape. All right, so here we have our main path, and that is the hot layer. It's just a simple shape. I had these keys duplicated just in case I wanted to shift these things around, but now I'm doing it with an expression, so we only really need one set. Basically, it just does this. So that's the default base shape. It's a good idea when you're trying to make fire to cross it over like this because then it gives you kind of a way to let it disappear or you can have little particles and stuff shoot off of there. And then it just does it the other way and then goes back. So from there, each one builds off the same thing. They all have an expression now. So in this case, the path is driven by the other shape's path and we're using value at time, time minus 1 24th, that sets it back one frame in this 24 frames per second comp. So basically this thing is grabbing the path of the other one, one frame behind. So this will be delayed one frame later and the next one is the same thing, it's just minus 1 12th, which is 2 24th. So on this one, we're doing offset path, as you can see, which helps cut out that other piece because I don't want that in this one. Next one, same thing, it's just a little smaller. Each one is scaled down. This one, same thing, offset path, it's just more offset. So what this lets you do is just tweak the base one and it'll affect the changes in the other ones. So you can see how they kind of look together. And then all we did for this part is make a spark, what I'm calling a spark here. And it's just a shape that's kind of just two points. And as it goes up in just a couple of frames, it basically squeezes back out and look at it. So you can see it just squashes up and then I just selected the whole path and made it really tiny for the next one, which I'll move that over real quick. You can see, I just took the whole path, hit Command T, scaled it down, and then it just cuts off. Now back in our fire comp, you put those over, uh, depending on what you wanna blank out, you put you set it to silhouette alpha, and you put it in between the layers. For this one, I just have three, one over the top, which is really just on this small piece, so it doesn't really matter. And then in the other ones, I have one that cuts out the orange here that pops in, and then I have one that cuts out the other one behind it but it's behind the middle part of the flame, so it only puts a hole in the back. You can put them all over the top if you want or whatever you want to do. And then I have three sparks, one for each piece. You can see I actually built this one on top of the shape. The next one is this guy. It pops off the very top, and then I have one over here off the orange, and it grows into it and then pops back off. And then I just set my time to the first set of frames, so it's eight frames long, so we're going from four to 12. That's mostly because originally I had all of these, these keys in each layer, and I had them set like this, but since I had 16 frames, as long as I moved these within there and didn't crop them, it would let it loop. But now it'll loop anyway with the expression the way it's set. So this is what it looks like at the final. And you can do this other ways too. You can actually hand animate the whole thing, which is how the original one that I did was. But the concept is still the same. You want the inside one to move the least. The other ones outside can be violent. And the outer one moves a lot, but because it's so big, you don't want to move it like too much. So if we move through this one kind of slowly, you can kind of see that things move through kind of like a wave, like this ripples down and then it comes back up. And that's just kind of how that works. But if you need a quick and easy way to do it, there you go. All right, guys, if you want to help out Workbench, make sure to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash workbench. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.